So when we lose our testosterone as we age, what we now call late onset hypogonadism, used to be called andropause, like menopause in men, um, it's now called hypogonadism, meaning you're not making enough testosterone from your gonads. Many men have it, but very few are actually recognized and treated. And there are some serious consequences of losing your testosterone. Doesn't mean losing it entirely, just having low levels. If you, especially if you combine that with a poor lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle, lack of exercise, like it says in there, if you don't move, you get fat. And it leads to something called a metabolic syndrome, which is a, a recognized recently serious complex of problems. Mainly obesity, like we all get the central obesity. As you know, men tend to get the spare tire or the muffin top or whatever you call it. That's called central obesity. That predisposes to insulin resistance and diabetes. That also is related to high blood pressure and abnormal lipids and atherosclerosis and then heart disease and low testosterone. So it's a very important thing to avoid all those hamburgers or quadruple burgers, whatever they were. Osteoporosis, as I mentioned, is common. One in eight men over age 50 compared to one in four women. So it's not as common as in women, but it is common. And if you look through history, look at Churchill. This is on the lower left, that, anybody know who that is? Benjamin Franklin. You see their backs, you can see how they're Clarence Darrow, the late Pope. The late Pope had serious osteoporosis and many others, Ronald Reagan. So it is a common problem. So you see the guys with the, with the uh, kyphotic backs, they have osteoporosis. And prostate, of course, is a huge male issue with prostate cancer, benign growth, and inflammation or prostatitis. So men's health, just to sum up, I think I've gone way over time, have I? It's okay? All right. It's not about finding the fountain of youth. How many of you take Sao Palmetto? Okay, well, how many of you have heard about Sao Palmetto? Right. So you get it in the, in the health food store. Sao Palmetto comes from the palm berry, the, the dwarf palm berry of southern Florida. And it's my theory, and you heard it here first, that the fountain of youth that Ponce de Leon discovered was the palm berry, was Sao Palmetto. I think he ate those palm berries and noticed he was peeing better, and he thought he found the fountain of youth. I don't push Sao Palmetto, by the way. So ultimately, the goal of our Men's Health Initiative is to decrease the gap between life expectancy and health expectancy. We like to say add 10 quality years to the middle of your life. Because aging isn't always pretty. We know that, and we can't reverse time. We can't stop aging, but we can try to grow older without growing old, if you will, and delaying frailty and delaying dependency by modifying our lifestyles earlier. So our real targets are the 20, 30, 40-year-olds. There are some in the audience, but some of the gray hairs I'm seeing, this is the message we have to take to our sons and grandsons, okay? These are our, we have to target them and with promoting a healthier lifestyle, physical activity. We have to reverse what's going on in the last couple of decades. You've seen a change. People sitting around and watching TV and their computers and, and so forth and not getting outside on the street and exercising, not eating healthy. For those over 40s, I do encourage at least a baseline PSA and a DRE, but that's a whole, whole other topic on prostate, looking in your colons, checking your bones, and re assessing what your risks are. And these, there are tools to do that. And if you do find something, to intervene early on. Because if you leave things like blood pressure, you'd be amazed how many 30-year-olds don't know what their blood pressure is. 15% of 30 to 40-year-olds have high blood pressure. If that goes undetected for 10 to 20 years, they're going to have kidney failure, strokes, heart attacks, and so on. Why not just get your blood pressure checked when you're 30 or, and then at 35 and 40? What can be simpler? You can go to a Sharper's Drug Mart and get your blood pressure checked. And then go to see your doctor if it's elevated. Don't have to stand in line to see your doctor. Or if you don't have a family doctor, you can get... It's simple things. But it's a matter of reaching out to people and making them aware. And that's really our, our bottom line goal. So I'm going to finish up just by saying we can't do it alone. We, there are many, many other people out there, groups, uh, advocacy groups,
partners in the prostate support groups, heart support groups, and so forth. The media, we need the media on board, people like Phil to help us get the messages out. We need to go to academics. We need, medic we need male health curricula in our universities and our medical schools. And men need their partners to steer them. Okay, that says, with this, I'm going to control your life. And finally, we need role models. So we have to be the role models. When we grew up, many of us grew up in the 50s and 60s, you all recognize the role models that we grew up with, with Father's Knows Best and Leave It to Beaver. Well, this is what our kids today are growing up with. This is their role model. And it's unfortunate, but this is the reality. So we have to overcome that and get new messaging out there. We have to seize the opportunity. We have the opportunity here in British Columbia to be leaders world leaders in improving men's health and well-being. And I really thank you all for coming out and appreciate your support.